Hey everybody, Stephen Rosell here, Senior Technical Specialist with Autodesk, aka Maya Guy, and I am going to cover part three in a demo series about the time editor in Maya. So in the first two rounds, we covered uh, just the basics of creating clips and how to do things like cycling and and scaling and as well as things like blending and grouping. In the second, we covered uh, the underlying kind of structure of the time editor related to clips and source animation. In this one, we're going to cover how to actually go about uh, externalizing this animation and creating clip libraries and the process involved. So for starters, uh, just to point out, the content browser now supports kind of a graphical representation of files. So you can actually see an image that's associated with a Maya file. So you browse to a folder, and then you can basically see the contents of that folder. And then you can also embed animation. So if I just hover over this, I can see a little snapshot, basically, or a little uh, almost flip book of the animation that's contained within that. Or I could see a static image. But in order to bring this into my scene, I just simply find the clip that I want, drag it into the time editor, and assuming that it matches the character in my scene, that will automatically hook everything up. And in this case, you can see now that drives my character. So this is basically kind of temporarily overriding any direct animation on the character itself. Now, in order to create this, I have to basically create animation in Maya first and then export it as a clip. So let's go over that process. If I delete this, you'll notice that the character goes right back to where he was. And any animation that was attached to that character is kind of reactivated. So the clip itself was just temporarily overriding that. But this is actually animation in my scene. You can see by the color over here that it's red. And if I take a look in the graph editor, you can see that it is indeed in, in key and curve form. But now let's take this and put it back into clip form. So I'm actually going to just simply select the hierarchy here. I'll go into the time editor, and then I'll just add animation from the scene. I'm, not, I'm going to use the default settings. And now I've basically pulled that animation off of the character, so it's no longer directly driving it with keys and curves. You can see the color of the channel box has changed. It's kind of this orange color, which indicates that it's being driven by the time editor now. So now I want to take this particular animation, and I want to create a clip out of it and I want to externalize that. So I already have a, a clip form, but I want to take this clip and I want to put it into a file that I could reuse. So the way you do that is to basically take the clip in whatever state it's in, and we just go to the File Export section. So we'll go to Export, go into the Options, and when we choose the option here, uh, I can either export FBX, Maya file, uh, ASCII or binary, it doesn't really matter. Let's just say I want to do a binary file. And I also want to save the thumbnail not only a thumbnail, but I want to save a play blast, which is going to create an animated thumbnail. So I'll frame my character here, and I'll go into the capture mode, and you'll get a little yellow box, and that yellow box is basically the frame of the icon that's going to be captured. So now I want to do not just a still, but a play blast. So I want to say, let's just do 30 frames, which is about half the animation. Or actually, well, let's just do the full animation. We'll just say 60 frames. So I will pull back a little bit more to give myself a little bit more room. I'll say capture. That will basically do a play blast, and it will generate a quick little animated thumbnail. Now when I save this out and export, I could put this into my hierarchy, and I'll just put it in here, and we'll call this short, or let's call it wave dash short. And export. I oh, already did that. So now it's been externalized. I can actually delete it from my scene. So it's no longer in the scene. I can even go to the outliner, and I can delete it from my sources. Let's just take all these clips. I no longer have any clips in my scene. When I scrub through, I have no animation in the time editor. I have no animation in the scene itself. So now when I go back to the content browser, and I take a look at that folder, if I scroll down, I have this animation that is called Wave Short. And if I hover over that, I'll see a visual representation of that file that I just created. This contains the clip information and all the assignments in terms of the nodes that it needs to connect to. When I drop that into my scene, what I'm going to see now is the exact animation that I had previously exported. So now when I play this back, you can see it looks exactly like the animation that was in the animated thumbnail. And if I take a look in the, the graph editor itself, the animation hasn't been 
compressed or rather it hasn't been uh, baked in any way. It has the true representation of the original keys. So now I can drag and drop that from the file into any scene uh, pretty, pretty easily and flexibly. So let's talk a little bit about how you do this with more complex situations. So here I've got a series of clips that have been blended together. So I've taken that exact same wave, I've duplicated it, scaled it, modified the timing a bit, and then I've grouped it together twice and then grouped it together a third time to create a hierarchy. And then using a higher level scale, I've just scaled all this so it fits into exactly 100 frames. And when I play this back, you can see that it is basically a repeating wave with a little bit of variability in the timing of each wave. So what I want to do now is take all this and put it into a file that I can reuse on other characters. Now, I can't actually take this entire group and put it into a, a clip uh, without actually first combining it first. So what we need to do is actually go in and just bake all of this together. I can do it in a, either a destructive or a non-destructive way. It's my choice. Uh, but what I want to do is basically take this group and I will right click. Uh, you'll see, by the way, if I grab a, a control object, it's kind of colored with this kind of orange color, which means it's driven by the time editor. I'm going to take this group, right click, and I'll go to bake. And I can either bake to a brand new clip, which would basically put all this into clip form. I could bake it back to the scene, which would put it onto the character itself. So if I come in here and say, for instance, bake to scene, uh, actually, let's undo that one step. Uh, let's take this and actually bake this to the scene and delete, that will composite all that animation together and it will put it into regular key and curve form. So what you'll see here is that now it's all being driven, indicated by the pink or red color, it's all being driven by curves and keys. So if I take a look, what it's done is it's baked each iteration of that wave and then where it needs to, it will insert keys in order to deal with things like blending. So it does what's called a smart bake, uh, which basically allows you to preserve the key structure as best as possible and add density where it's necessary. So that's baking directly into the scene. So let's go back a step. Luckily, you can just easily undo all this without a problem. So now I'm right back to where I was. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this group. This time, I'm going to bake it to a clip and delete the group. So now I bake it to a clip. Now all that animation is still in time editor world, so it's not on a direct uh, curve or key. It is, however, through the clip. If I grab the clip and I go to the graph editor, all that representation I showed you before, the smart baking, the same stuff happens. It's just now that it's in clip form instead of direct key and curve form. So now that I have a single clip, and we'll just go ahead and rename this. Um, let's actually just go to the, uh, the attribute editor. And instead of calling this baked, I'm going to call this wave uh, cycle, something like that. Actually, that's a little confusing because there's two places to name this. So actually, let me undo that. Uh, and I'm just going to leave the source the same. And then I'm actually going to change the name representation for the clip itself. So we'll call it wave cycle here. So it gets a little confusing because there's uh, a, a couple of different ways of naming this. But at any rate, what I want to do is take this clip now and I want to export this. So I will go to the time editor and similar to what I did before, I'll just simply export this. I'll just say export selected, but go into the options, make sure that I have the thumbnail option on. And this time I'm gonna create an animated play blast. We'll do this, um, let's just say whatever, it doesn't really matter, uh, 50 frames. And I'll do a quick capture, make sure that looks right. Let it cycle through. So now I can see I've got a couple of different iterations as opposed to the one before, which was one. I'll save this out, export, and we'll call this wave-cycle and save. So now I can actually just delete this from my scene altogether. I'll just delete it here. And if I go back to the content browser, just like before, if I scroll down to the bottom, I should have two clips. I have the original wave short, which was the original unedited source animation of that wave with one iteration. And then I've got the wave cycle, which is the modified and composited retimed version. So if I drag this in, what you could see is that that is indeed the wave short. It's a single loop of the animation. And then I'll drag this one in. And that is indeed the wave cycle. And I'll just put these kind of side by side. 
Now, as I'm com comparing things, I can actually put these into the same track or I can put them into separate tracks. So I can come in here and create a new animation track and I can stack these one on top of another. And then I've got a soloing option over here where I can compare and contrast. So this one is the single iteration of the original wave. And then if I solo this one, it'll mute the other one out. And now I've got the one that is the cycled, retimed, composited version of that wave. And if I take a look at the graph editor for this, you'll see it has the exact same key and curve structure that I had uh, when I baked it all together. So hopefully that makes sense and will allow you to get started building some cool libraries of animation.